Hi everybody! One film that we reviewed in 2023 was Space Jam A New Legacy. Another film that we reviewed in 2023, Dark Tower and Space Jam A New Legacy. Another film that we reviewed in 2023, Fat Beach, Dark Tower, and Space Jam A New Legacy. One film that we reviewed in 2023, Curse of the Cannibal Confederates, Fat Beach, Dark Tower, and Space Jam A New Legacy. Another film that we reviewed in 2023, Blades, Curse of the Cannibal Confederates, Fat Beach, Dark Tower, and Space Jam, A New Legacy. Another film that we reviewed in 2023, Ator 4, Blades, Curse of the Cannibal Confederates, Fat Beach, Dark Tower, and Space Jam, A New Legacy. Another film that we reviewed in 2023, Dark Crystal, Ator 4, and Blades. Curse of the Cannibal Confederates, Fat Beach, Dark Tower, and Space Jam A New Legacy. Another film that we reviewed in 2023, Robo Vampire 2, Dark Crystal, Ator 4, The Film Called Blades, Curse of the Cannibal Confederates, Fat Beach, Dark Tower, and Space Jam A New Legacy. Another film that we reviewed in 2023, Groundhog's Day, Robo Vampire 2, Dark Crystal, Ator 4, Jaws Parody Blades, Curse of the Cannibal Confederates, Fat Beach, Dark Tower, and Space Jam A New Legacy. Another film that we reviewed in 2023, Cats and Peachtopia, Groundhog's Day, Robo Vampire 2, Dark Crystal, Ator 4, Quest for the Mighty Sword. That film called Blades. Curse of the Cannibal Confederates, Fat Beach, Dark Tower, and Space Jam, the piece of... Anyway... Another film that we reviewed in 2023, Alien from L.A., Cats and Peachtopia, Groundhog's Day, Robo Vampire 2, Dark Crystal, Ator 4, that film called Blades, Curse of the Cannibal Confederates, Fat Beach, Dark Tower, and Space Jam, A New Legacy. Another thing that we reviewed in 2023, A Furry Little Christmas, Alien from L.A., Cats and Peachtopia, Groundhog's Day, Robo Vampire 2, Dark Crystal, Troll 3, That Film, Troma's Blades, Curse of the Cannibal Confederates, Fat Beach, Dark Tower, and That Piece of Junk, Space Jam, A New Legacy. Now on with the review. It's real snow out here, folks. I know, we need something like cut it right here. No, not too there. That's okay, yeah. We can make it there. I hate Seth Rogen. I dislike Seth Rogen. I I do not like his movies. I don't like him because I know he didn't write it, but his writing partner did, Evan Goldberg. Mm. Was Evan in the movie or no? Just he, wrote it. He apparently has a cameo as like an elf who sings. So he he was an elf along with that other guy. Who did, with karaoke or something. No, he was, oh, he was the elf that messed up. No, that other elf that was at the... Thing where the the manager at the catering business said, "I want you to smile like an elf." 
No, not that one. It was when they were doing karaoke. Who was karaoke. that one? Who was that? I don't know. Gordon Lovett. You thought Joseph Gordon Lovett was Evan Goldberg? No, he was an elf also at the catering in the beginning. And I said at the karaoke, doing karaoke. I know. I, and then I said he did not do very well. I hate this freaking movie. No, no I'm not going to say I just, it. I'm not going to, because it's Christmassy and you said to pick a critic, and you said you're tired of me picking bad movies. So I picked one that as of this recording has a 69% critical score on Rotten Tomatoes and according to both Double Toasted and Midnight oh. Screenings is a hilarious comedy that's funny. You've got a hangnail. No, it's Lent. I did not find it funny. Certain parts. Okay, certain but parts. But one critic funny. said it's a few the high school teacher. <laughs> one one critic said it's, it's scaring them. Ah. One but one critic said it's going to be a future comedy classic for Christmas. I don't think so. Yeah, as much as Bad Santa 2. I'm right here. You don't have to yell in my ear. I'm talking to the audience, not Ooh. to you. Then I should stand over here. Then you're not in the frame. That's okay. Hi. Better? You're still very loud. Well, I'm ticked. I hated this movie. Then why are we even reviewing it? Just Because people... it's a Christmas movie. Did you even show him the thing? Here it is. Spoiler alert. My two favorite characters are not on the cover. Let me turn it around and show you and show you a few more. The I following probably can't even see it. <laughs> I, I don't care. Well, who was one of your favorites? Of these people shown, none of them are my favorites. Diana was, right? Ethan's ex girlfriend. Lizzie Kaplan? Yeah, I thought she liked her. No, she... I like that she had more lines in this than the interview. Where, she, where in the interview, all she was was a plot device. And just to go, oh, who, What? Who was... What? <gasps> quiet. Who was the high school teacher? Was Michael that, Shannon. Oh, Mr. Green, right? That was one of my favorite characters. <laughs> he was pretty funny. Now, okay... I've said in the scoop review, I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of toilet jokes because I think they're above the intelligence of someone older than the third five? term. <clears throat> but if there's one thing that is lazier and worse in R-rated movies than poop jokes, pee jokes, oh, and vomit jokes. Don't worry, this movie has a vomit joke. Oh my God, Midnight Mass. Yeah, but it's okay because it's Seth Rogen, so he gets to say, hallelujah. Thank you, Seth Rogen. I would rather have seen a Medea Christmas. It was funnier and more Christmassy and had a better message. That movie... In a Medea Christmas, it was all about like not seeing the skin, not seeing the skin color of who you're attracted to, but seeing the heart. I don't in think this, I saw that. Okay, imagine this without the drug without the drug jokes, but instead actual jokes. Yeah, and why would she the G give him mother, a bunch of drugs? The mother of his child give him one last hurrah. With his boys. Because they wanted to rip off the hangover. Oh my god. This insults hangover three. <sighs> hangover three, I can at least remember one of the jokes where they took a jab at PETA. Okay. Hopefully we'll forget this movie really fast. Oh, and you might be wondering. Well, this is a po okay. Oh, the wait, whole wait, no, wait, wait. One thing. One no, more. No. One more. My th turn. One more thing, and then no, you can. No, my turn. I'm gonna let you finish, but I want to say one more thing. You know how you were wondering why, uh, Betsy. Who names her kid Betsy? Uh, Jillian. Seth Rogen's wife gave him drugs. You know why? Because it was the last hurrah as the three of them as friends doing stuff at Christmas. No, for two reasons. 
One, if they took out all the drug jokes, the movie would be about 35 minutes long. <sighs> and two, it's a Seth Rogen movie. He's really stretching by playing someone who does drugs. Well, what I don't get is... That's like Adam Sandler stretching and playing somebody Jewish. James Franco was playing himself. Yes. Okay, James Franco would have gone out with her. Who? Oh. With Mindy... Whatever. Mindy Kaling's character? Sarah, yeah. Why don't you say her last name? I probably can't say it. Can't you leave. can't say it because, as in most Seth Rogen movies, God forbid you give some of your female characters dimensions... Or in some cases, even last names. Now the one person... way to go, writers. You're less pro woman than Lady Terminator. The one person that played herself was pretty good. Yes, she sang Wrecking, Wrecking Ball. Ball. Yes, Miley Cyrus is in this movie, and she was pretty good. Yeah, she she, had she like... didn't have many lines, but she was pretty good. And then she, she was saying the f she was funnier than half these than half the people. She's saying with. Joseph Gordon Lovett. Yeah. Live it, love it. Love it. Love it. But anyway, okay. And then he proposed to a girl that he broke up with three months two ago. Two years ago. Oh, yeah. Three months ago. Okay. I do want to say, I am so <laughs> glad that Mindy Kaling is stretching as an actress playing an Indian woman who dates a white guy who doesn't love her. Apart from 98% of her roles and self-inserts, I've never womp, seen womp, her womp. do that before. Womp, womp, womp. But I was trying to notice her. I was trying to notice her hairy gorilla arms. I didn't notice. Yeah, because when you're a apparently according to Velma, when you're a geeky Indian girl, you have hairy arms. Okay, I don't want to know about Velma. I don't care about Velma. They should just take it off and rule it on fit to be on TV. It's streaming. It's not TV. Okay, whatever. It's it HBO. Shouldn't it shouldn't be. It's it's what you described is pretty okay. bad. Anyway, okay. let's okay. get away from it. Let's... Fine, fine. Let's just talk about what's in the movie. So anyway, this movie loves to criticize strippers. Not really. He... He was on drugs, and he saw the future, his baby daughter as a stripper. Yeah. And the mom was sitting there with the money. Ooh, do, 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 do. Like, she was supposed to, like, shake it, whatever. No, make it rain. And Seth Rogen was upset that he didn't read parenting books, which apparently implies that if your daughter strips, that means you're a terrible parent. Some people feel that way. Anyway, what I you used, don't, I use these fingers. I know, but you don't have a daughter, so how do you know? I want to be sex positive. You're not a parent. You don't have a daughter. You don't know what it's like. If JJ became a stripper, you think I'd be like, oh, dang, I screwed up as a brother. No, I wouldn't give a darn. Whatever. Okay. Okay, back to this thing. So anyway, we get to see James Franco's penis, and we get to see a long bit about how Seth Rogen feels like he's, uh, where he feels like he's sexually confused slash by curious because he want he might want to suck James's penis. Now, this part was not made for me. Wasn't Scenes with female me. nudity are no. made for me. No nudity is made for me, okay? Don't go put me in that bucket. Oh, it's for you ladies. No, it's not for me. By the way, our rated... Maybe other ladies, but not for me. By the way, R-rated movies, you know, you can also show female nudity if you're going to show male nudity. You know that, right? Or were you hoping this could get a PG-13? What, and then more people would go look at it? Okay, so do you want to talk about... Do you want to talk about the plot, or can I just keep granting about stuff I don't like in this movie? No, I think you should talk about the plot. Okay, the plot is that Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a man-child, Seth Rogen is married, and his wife is expecting, and Anthony Mackie was a nobody. However, he is now taking steroids, and now he's a great football 
and now he's a great football player. Yeah, and the Red Bull spokesperson. Product placement. Yep. Hey, people, remember how when I Jack... we were going to talk about the plot and not go off on a tangent. Hey, people, remember how in Adam Sandler's Jack and Jill, he was criticized for a lot of product placement? Okay, quiet. Just saying. So he had one of those stretched um, Jeep-like limo... Filled with type Red thing. Bull. It had Red Bull on the side, and they had a driver for the night. And so what they did is... Who, um, who I originally thought was Mike Ethan, Berbiglia. It was Ethan, uh, Nathan Fielder. Ethan Miller. His oh. parents died. And so he it died, was around his parents Christmas. Died, no, his parents no. died on Christmas Day. So they decided to just get screwed up. And so him and his friends decided to make him happy, cheer him up, by going to a bar and getting blitzed on Christmas and then, oh, by the way, the movie is narrated by a certain celebrity. It's crazy. I want to get the movie pregnant. Who's that? Tracy Morgan. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh. Oh, would, Ooh. Would, would, oh, wait, wait, wait. This is this channel. Hello, I'm Captain Caveman. What other? Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, I'm Captain Caveman. Are you going to talk about the movie at all? I'm actually, I actually wish uh, Tracy Morgan had been the narrator for more of it instead of just the beginning. And the end. Yeah. So anyway, talks about drugs, talks about drugs, talks about drugs, talks about drugs, well, talks because, about drugs. Because, stop! Talks about, stop! Talks about drugs. Seth Rogen has that little pouch from his wife, box, whatever, filled with like cocaine, okay, heroin, stop. weed, stop. speed, probably. And then Anthony Mackey, yeah, the Red Bull guy, yeah, gets a call from a couple guys on his team, and they want weed, weed. So then they call the high school teacher, Mr. Green. Yeah. Who comes up, comes, he's in this car. Yeah. That looks like from the outside, it's covered in snow. I was thinking, But I thought it was yeah. the inside windows were white. I don't remember which. I, I thought it was because he had the heater on. Because you know how when it's night, when it's cold, how like your windows will fog up? Maybe. Nope. It's because he's smoking, man. Try this. So anyway, Chris Roberts, who is Anthony Mackey, he's picked to... Training day. Ha <laughs> ha Okay, I don't think we are going to discuss the movie. That's what so... that scene, that's what his scenes kept reminding me of, and... His scenes are like the only good parts. Him and Miley Cyrus have the only good parts in this movie. Everyone else is just a one note. Well, it all it all is based on the Nutcracker ball. The ball. Nutcracker's ball. And you don't know where it is. You have to have invitations, and they have to. You have to call a certain number at 10 o'clock to find out where you need to go. Mm -hmm. And right before that, they were working their way over there. Then they all kind of split up because the football player sees um, the girl that ripped him off of his Rebecca weed. Grinch, who they don't even say her last name in the movie. She ripped him off, and then they get into the She's limo. a sticky bandit, like Hans Gruber. Oh, man, don't, 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 don't. Oh, don't, I'm not kidding. They play Die Hard music. In case, when you, when she said Hans Gruber from Die Hard, you were confused as to what she meant by that. So then, they go chasing her in the Red Bull, lim, stretch limo, jeep, whatever. Anthony Mackie chases her then by, him, yeah, by himself. Yeah, they crash, and then the limo driver starts crying, and then, yeah, Seth the Rogen. football player goes chasing her. And then Seth Rogen goes is off so on his own. Is so on mushrooms and cocaine and marijuana and who knows what else. 
that he's talking to a nativity scene and the nativity scene is talking back at him, including the animals. You're right, movie. I should have watched the star instead. Yeah, the sheep were actually dogs. Yeah. And and Joseph was Another Spencer. movie with Tyler Perry in it. <laughs> Joseph was Spencer. And he took his... Um... Joseph was Spencer? Yeah, he called him Spencer. Oh, okay. The Spencers or whatever. Maybe that was one of... Somebody... He was okay. trying to get his um, phone, phone back. Yeah, from Mindy Kaling because he made Mindy Kaling... He said I've already things. said I've already said my channel's not safe. I've already said my channel's not safe for YouTube. He made Don't. Mindy Kaling drink his nose blood. He didn't know he bled into it. Okay? It was pretty gross. It tastes like pennies. Copper. Yeah. I thought she said pennies. Oh, well, she I did. Don't care. Pennies are copper. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's oh. when that's when he goes to okay. midnight mass. You know what? Screwed up. You know what? I I think if you guys want to see the movie, just watch it yourself, and then you'll understand why it's a big mess. We're apparently the minority that doesn't like it. No, nope, don't like it. Now, I have a few questions for you about this movie. Oh, come on, <clears throat> you're rambling. This or sisters? Oh God, sisters. If I had to pick. I would pick Sisters 2 because also. Bobby Moynihan was funnier in it. Yeah. Um, would this movie be funny if... It had different characters? No. Would this movie be funny if we were, we were into drug humor? Or we did drugs? No. Jeez, no, we no. don't. We don't do drugs. I'm just saying hypothetically. Would this movie? No. Okay. Oh my god. Um. Why you would even? Here's the here's the third here's the third <sighs> question. Here's the third question, and this is one I really want your answer on. <sighs> A lot of people criticize Adam Sandler movies for being lazy, lowbrow humor, with a lot of celebrity cameos, where Adam Sandler is typically the good guy. And a lot of those movies, Pixels, um, Murder Mystery, Murder Mystery 2, Ridiculous 6... Okay, if you're getting at, I'd rather watch Adam Sandler no, no, movies no, than no, this No, 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 no. That's not what I'm getting at. Then what I'm hurry getting and get at, to the point. What I'm getting at is if this starred Adam Sandler. And he wrote it? Seth Rogen didn't write this. No, if Adam wrote it. If, no, if he didn't write it. If he just, if he was in the Seth Rogen role, and this had nothing to do with Seth Rogen or Evan Goldberg or that group. And it was instead replaced with Adam Sandler's group. Who would, would be Adam Sandler's group? Would this... Who would be Adam Sandler's Chris group? Chris Rock, uh, Dana Carvey, David Spade, Kevin Nealon, Josh Gad, um, Kevin James. No, I just... I think the um, script... Taylor Lautner. Stop! No, I'm just saying... I am going to give my answer. Because you haven't heard my question yet. You just if, said if Adam Sandler and his team was in here doing this movie. Would it have gotten as much critical acclaim and praise and love as it did? Or do you think it would be hated like his other movies? I think the whole plot was bad. It, it turned out well in the end for a couple people, but... I don't know if he he could have turned it around. I think it would have been yeah. trashed. Okay, good. Okay, if you want to watch it, just watch it. If not, I don't, don't understand Seth Rogen's appeal. I don't know if I ever okay, will. But... I'm, I'm. Hey, we've got another. There's another Seth Rogen movie I haven't seen, and who knows? By the time this comes out, there'll probably be three more. Okay. Join us next time when Woo. we needed a break from sisters, so we're gonna so. You're going to pick the final review of the year. Good. And then we'll see you back sometime in January. Okay. Bye. Bye. I wish you had worn I wish you had had some holiday decorations. <laughs>